Thank you very much. Thank you, Gianfranco. Um, excellencies, uh, colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, my honor and great pleasure as EU representative for, of the for Polisario Front and the government of the SEDR to be among you today. Uh, let me begin by expressing uh, my gratitude to the members of the Geneva Support uh, Group for Western Sahara for their tireless support and for having invited me to contribute to this uh, important uh, uh, discussion. I should express my government gratitude to the previous chair of the Geneva Support Group, Ambassador Chakato Diseko of South Africa, and to the newly nominated Mr. Fernandez of Timor Leste. I also extend my gratitude to the distinguished panelists, Her Excellency Mrs. Shapwa, Deputy Minister of Justice of uh, the Republic of Namibia, Barrister Deya from the Pan-African Lawyers Union, and uh, Mrs. Aminatou Haidar and Hassan Moulid, uh, uh, of the uh, Hassan Moulid, who is a member of the uh, uh, Sahrawi National Commission of Human Rights, for their um, extremely valuable contributions to this conference, which will allow us to highlight some essential points in relation to the situation prevailing in the non self governing territory of Western Sahara and the relationship with the African Union and the United Nations. Last week, uh, at the opening of the 2020 session of the Special Committee on the Situation with regard to the implementation of the Declaration on the Granting Independence of Colonial Countries and Peoples, the UN Secretary General recalled that Timor-Leste was the last territory removed from the list in 2002. He stressed the, that the concerns of the peoples of the territories are varied and it is our collective responsibility to amplify their voices. Many of them face real and pressing challenges. Indeed, the Sahrawi people are facing a great number of pressing challenges, all of them related to the continuous illegal military occupation of Western Sahara by the Kingdom of Morocco and the consequent systematic violations of all human rights. In fact, the history of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic is much linked to both the African Union and its predecessor, the Organization of African Unity, as well as to the United Nations. The SADR was founded on February 27, 1976 and joined the Organization of African Unity in 1983. I have to recall here that on November the 6th, 1975, the UN Security Council, in adopting its resolution 380, requested Morocco to withdraw immediately all the participants in the march from the territory of Western Sahara. And since 1979, the UN General Assembly while deeply deploring the continued occupation of Western Sahara, urged the Kingdom of Morocco to end the occupation of the territory. <coughs> Sadly, the war in Western Sahara lasted for 14 years and left behind thousands of killed and injured, while hundreds of Sahrawis disappeared and their whereabouts have still to be known. Thousands of Sahrawis have sought refuge have sought refuge in neighboring Algeria, where the third generation is actually growing up in a mixture of sentiments, including resignation and revolt. A 2,700 kilometers wall built by the occupying power in the 80s, full of millions of anti-personnel mines that have caused and continue to cause casualties and which separates 
from north to south, the Sahrawi people, uh, from east to west, the Sahrawi people partici participates to the destruction of the social and economic structure of the Sahrawi society. At its 19th summit in June 1983, the Organization of African Unity adopted the OEU Peace Plan on Western Sahara, which urged the parties to the conflict, the Kingdom of Morocco and the Polisario Front, to undertake direct negotiations with the view to bringing about a ceasefire to create the necessary conditions for a peaceful and fair referendum for self-determination of the people and requested the United Nations in conjunction with the OEU to provide a peacekeeping force to be stationed in Western Sahara to ensure, to ensure peace and security during the organization and conduction of the referendum. Prior to that time, the Kingdom of Morocco was member of the Organization of African U Unity, but short before the adoption of the peace plan, it decided to withdraw from the organization. It is only in January 2017 that the Kingdom of Morocco integrated the actual regional organization, the African Union. It is unfortunate that since, since that, it has yet to adhere to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights that the Sahrawi Republic has ratified since 1986. It is also unfortunate that since it has integrated the regional organization, the Kingdom of Morocco has constantly advocated for the uh, exclusion of the Sahrawi Republic, those um, breaching some fundamental principles of the Charter of the African, Unity, Af African Union, namely, one, the sovereign equality and interdependence among <coughs> member states of the Union, to the respect of borders existing on achievement of independence, and third, the prohibition of the use of force or threat to use force among member states of the Union. Last November 6, in celebrating the famous march that led to the illegal occupation of Western Sahara, King Mohammed VI reaffirmed that the autonomy initiative uh, uh, of Western Sahara within the framework of the kingdom, that is the uh, uh, proposal or the initiative of Morocco, is the only possible way to achieve a settlement of the conflict with full respect of the national, what he calls the national unity and territorial integrity of Morocco. In this context, anyone is allowed to seriously doubt that the kingdom of Morocco resumes negotiations without preconditions and in good faith as requested by the UN Security Council in all its resolutions. It is to be noted that even the United Nations African Union Ta Task Force on Peace and Security, which held its uh, 18, 18th uh, consultative meeting last February 11 in Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa, reiterated its attachment to international legality and encouraged the parties uh, to participate <coughs> constructively and without preconditions in the political process of decolonization in Western Sahara. The uh, organization of, uh, of the African Union, which uh, took uh, many initiatives and discussions with regard to Western Sahara situation, was naturally associated to the negotiation process that led to the ceasefire agreement and uh, subsequently to the creation of the UN mission for the referendum in Western Sahara in 1991. Today, the members of the UN Security Council have unfortunately decided to sideline the uh, continental organization from playing the role that is, in our view, key to the success of the, of the process. The Sahrawi Republic and the Polisario Front continue to advocate for an effective involvement of the African Union in the peace process. Recently, a growing concern within the African Union is, uh, uh, in this regard is really applauded. Uh, the Sahrawi Republic and the Polisario Front deeply regret that in recent time, uh, uh, in last months, 
some African countries have uh, decided to participate to the uh, economic or sport events organized by the occupying power in the occupied Western Sahara. Some of them have even decided to open a consulate there, which is simply illegal and contrary to the principles and the spirit of the UN Charter and the African Union Charter. In recalling that the 1993 Vienna World Conference on Human Rights considers the denial of the right of self-determination as a violation of human rights. I wish to stress that the UN General Assembly last December, in recognizing that the, that the enhancement of international cooperation and genuine dialogue contributes to the effective foundation of the international human rights system, <coughs> considered that the international cooperation in the field of human rights in conformity with the pur purposes of the principle set out in the Charter of the United Nations and international law should make an effective and practical contribution to the urgent task of preventing violations of human rights and fundamental freedoms. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in concluding, I take this opportunity, one, to call upon France, the motherland of human rights, to allow a human rights chapter in the MINURSU, in the UN Mission for the Referendum in Western Sahara, to be integrated in its mandate. And also to call upon Spain, the administering power of Western Sahara, to assume its responsibility with regard to the decolonization of the territory. To, to call upon the African Commission on Human and People's Rights and its mechanisms to continue to carefully monitor the human rights violations in the occupied Western Sahara. And finally, to call upon the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights to resume without delay the technical missions initiated in 2015, at least <coughs> east of the Bern and in the refugee camps, and to implement a specific program of technical cooperation as requested by the UN General Assembly uh, uh, decision 74 slash 95. I thank you for your kind attention. I thank you, Minister, 